Again, this is not a build that I would recommend copying to a T like I normally do. Okay, so this is a $400 gaming PC that I'm actually proud of and it's definitely worth copying. A few weeks ago, I uploaded another $400 build video, but if you watched it, then you'll know that things didn't really go according to plan. I rushed the used parts buying process and I ended up paying the price in multiple ways. Today's video is a much better way to do that type of project and I'm gonna make this as easy to copy as possible. I'll show you all the parts parts inside of here while explaining why they're better, and of course we'll fully benchmark it and compare it to the previous build. Link down in the description is also a build guide cheat sheet which has even more information such as alternative parts links, a cable management guide, and the bio settings. Combine that with our step-by-step -step building video and a dedicated benchmarking video on the ZTT Extras channel, you'll have everything you need to make this build for yourself. And real quickly, just in case you're new, my name is Zach and I make videos that help you jump into the world of gaming PCs. If you want to build yourself, I got a bunch of free tools on zttbuildhelp.com, I sell pre-built on zttbuilds.com, or if you just want to completely copy a build guide video like this, I got you covered no matter how you want to get into gaming PCs, so let's get started. Starting with the CPU, here's where I'm definitely focusing on improving from last time. This is the Ryzen 5 3600, and believe it or not, that's actually a pretty beefy upgrade coming from the 2600 from the previous build. It's still six cores and 12 threads and just one generation newer, but that architecture improvement was pretty substantial, which is why it's important. I did have to spend a few more bucks to get it though, and you'll notice throughout this video that that is kind of the theme of the build. Turns out that the prices I paid in that last $400 video were all somewhat fair at normal prices, but I promise I didn't go completely overboard today, but we are just a bit more expensive this time. I'll have links to every part I'm talking about down in the description, by the way. And real quickly, what's also linked down there is the sponsor of today's video, Corsair, and specifically their new Frame 5000D case. This is a premium upgraded and bigger version of their new Frame 4000D, now capable of holding a 420 millimeter radiator, and it includes all the additional benefits, such as the compatibility for reverse connection motherboards, swappable front panel designs, and a whole lot of solid options to get that Instagram worthy cable management. These new frame series cases are also all about modularity, which allows you to customize and configure the case exactly how you want. Modders and painters will absolutely love the flexibility. It's also super easy to build inside of even for first time PC builders. And I'll have a link to where you can check it out at the very top of the description. Thanks again to Corsair for the sponsorship, but now let's get back to our parts list. Next up, we have the motherboard, and this is a sneaky upgrade compared to last time. Instead of the Gigabyte B450M DS3H, now we have version two two of that motherboard, which gave us better results. But it also adds a VRM heatsink for better thermals and stability, as well as faster RAM support. Not bad for only $70, which is what I paid brand new actually over on eBay. The price of AM4 motherboards is climbing fast though. And to be honest with you, I don't think we'll be able to score them for these low prices for a whole lot longer. Now I do have to make a correction from the previous video because I was incorrectly unhappy with the motherboard in that last build. We weren't getting great GPU results in that build. And when we went to the bio settings, we couldn't find rebar support, so I assumed the motherboard was just so old that it didn't support it. After some research and seeing comments from you guys, I now realize that the RTX 2060 doesn't support rebar, so it wasn't actually the motherboard's fault. And we are definitely upgrading that GPU from the 2060 in this video, but before we get through all that, let's get through the rest of the parts list. Next up, we have the RAM, and here we're really upgrading from last time for only $4 more. Instead of a 16 gigabyte, 3000 megahertz DDR4 kit, we're now using this G-Skill Ripjaws V 3600 megahertz kit, which I snagged used off eBay for only $24. Like I explained in that previous video, these older Ryzen CPUs are heavily affected by your RAM speed, and there's a noticeable difference going from 3000 to 3600 megahertz. It's not gonna double your FPS or anything, but since you can get these more proper, faster D or 4 kits for only a couple dollars more, you definitely should do that in my opinion. Also, look out for a CL16 kit like this one for the better timings, because that will help as well. Now, one part I didn't feel the need to improve on is the SSD. So I grabbed the exact same one terabyte NeTac that you can find brand new on their eBay store for only $49. Like I said in that previous video, this is simply one of the cheapest Gen 3 NVMEs that you can find brand new, at least from a somewhat reputable company. If you wanna spend a few extra dollars and future-proof yourself a bit with a Gen 4, then go right ahead. Links to those will be down in the cheat sheet. But if you're looking to try to save as much money as possible without buying used, then this is what I would do. And finally, to polish off the motherboard prep, we have the CPU cooler for the 3600. And here's yet again, another 
improvement. Last time I accidentally bought a smaller 92 millimeter fan cooler. So this time I got a proper 120 millimeter full size tower cooler, but I'm still trying something new here. This is the Delta A40 from Occupus. Not sure if I'm allowed to say that or not, but that is what it is. And this cost me $22 brand new on Amazon. I'll have my usual options that I go with down the cheat sheet, but I just wanted to try something new. That way I'm always staying up to date on which options are available. And honestly, this one's pretty solid. It not only looks great, I do wish that RGB fan got a bit brighter though, but it does have a daisy chainable three pin ARGB connector and it performed great as we'll see in the cooling section here soon. Before getting to that though, next up is the power supply and this is the Apivia Prestige 600 watt, same exact choice as last time. And again, with this being tier C at only $51 brand new, this is one of the best options to go with for these ultra budget custom builds. Now I did have a problem with it though, although it was actually a problem with the extensions that I plugged into the power supply. And honestly, I think for the first time in my entire PC building career, the cable extensions that I originally used failed me. During the live stream VOD, you'll notice that I use these Smeoz 16 gauge green extensions. Go figure, that's what I get for going with a brand I can't even pronounce. But we found out during our testing that the GPU wouldn't work properly until we swapped these out. We actually thought the GPU was bad for a while until we started to rip the build apart. So we changed these out for an extension kit that does work and now it's perfectly fine. These are the surlier green and black extensions, which I actually had to steal from a Fellblade pre-built, which we sell on zttbuilds.com so we can make this video on time. Not only do these arguably look better, but now the system is perfectly stable and good to go. I'm not 100% sure if this individual Smoez extension kit was just bad and we got unlucky, or maybe this is an untrustworthy extension brand. It's my first time ever using them and I probably won't ever again now. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you have any experience with them. But next up on our parts list is the case and I'm using the exact same Montec X5M. For only $55, it's some of the best micro ATX value at this price point if you don't want a fish tank. And I even said in that video that this was probably my best part recommendation that I had inside that project. But now we have one more part to go over inside this build and it's unarguably gonna have the biggest impact in performance. And that is of course the GPU. In the last video, I used the RTX 2060 non-super and that's still a decent GPU in 2025 for around 120 bucks, but it's not the absolute most meta choice. I explained in that video that if I only made builds with meta choices, then we'd all have the same parts and that get boring after a while. But the meta choice at this price range is in fact the RX 5700 XT. So that's of course what I used for a redemption style of build. The reason why I would consider this a meta choice is because at least here in the United States, I don't think you can beat the FPS per dollar value that this GPU offers. Feel free to correct me if you think I'm wrong down in the comment section or feel free to share your once in a lifetime deal that beats the value of a 5700 XT. This is specifically a power color model and I grabbed this for $135 used on eBay. Again, this is a few bucks more than the previous option, so keep that in mind. But if you ever have the opportunity to spend 10 or $15 more to upgrade from a 2060 to a 5700 XT, I would personally do that 10 times out of 10. Before the benchmarking section confirms why I say that, let's take a quick look at the final parts list and you can see that we're a bit over the target mark, but honestly, I'm still pretty happy with it. Just like the last video, I'm not even gonna include the cable extensions in the final total because you probably shouldn't even buy them with this kind of a budget, but parts like the CPU, motherboard, RAM, and GPU were all a few bucks more than last time, so that's why we have a higher Cost. I hate when people online just always recommend, oh, just spend a little bit more money. But sometimes in situations like this, I do actually recommend doing that. It's certainly possible to build a PC like this for cheaper if you're even more patient than I was and take advantage of local banger deals. But even if you don't, a build like this has way less compromises than the last one did for only about 50 bucks more. Speaking of compromises, here's one of the top comments from that last video. This is why I can't do $400 builds anymore. There's just too many compromises. $500 is the floor. Usually it's more like 550 for my budget builds. Now I completely understand why some people think like this, but I feel like a build like this kind of proves that wrong. With the Ryzen 5 3600 fast DDR4 RAM and a beefy RX 5700 XT, I personally don't think there's many compromises anymore, but let's verify that with the benchmarking section. First, we fired up Helldivers 2 because I really wasn't happy with our 53 FPS from the last build. With this new build, we're pretty much double that with 107 FPS and we actually didn't even have to enable 
enable any sort of upscaling like we did last time. For Hogwarts Legacy, last time we only got 58 FPS with 1080p low and DLSS. Now we're rocking 102 FPS and without upscaling turned on at all. For the finals in 1080p low, we're just a touch above 100 FPS. Cyberpunk's now up to 79 FPS with 1080p medium. And even the new completely unoptimized Borderlands 4 is up to 71 FPS, but we did have to turn on FSR2 balanced in 1080p low for that one. To be honest with you, I think in that last build, we might have had an additional hidden issue outside of just the performance capability. This build is a whole lot better. Here's the rest of the games that we tested, and as you can see, everything is now up there with respectable settings and high FPS numbers. If you want to see the full benchmarking video with the longer video clips of every single game, that's uploaded on the ZTT Extras channel. We also upload a ton of shorts and additional content over there, so feel free to hit the subscribe button so you don't forget about those videos. Now, in terms of temperature testing, I was actually a bit worried about this 5700 XT, especially since the seller specifically said in the posting that the card's been running hot and they recommend reinstalling the thermal paste and pads. We didn't do that though, and here you can see in Assassin's Creed Shadows, we're staying at or just under 80 degrees, which isn't all that bad. In Baldur's Gate 3, where we're using a bit more of the CPU, that's staying very nice and chilly under 60 degrees as well. Straight up, this is just a much better build than last time, and if you're in the market for a sub $500 gaming PC, this is personally what I would do. Be sure to check out that cheat sheet link down below if you need some more help copying this, and also feel free to check out this $500 build with similar performance if you want an all white style of aesthetics instead.